So the next question, burning question in managing patient with multiple myeloma is the role of uh, uh, transplantation. It could be broken down into two parts. One is the high-dose chemotherapy, high-dose malphalan, and autologous stem cell transplant uh, is one of the key. And then, of course, using allogenic uh, stem cell transplantation in the management of myeloma. Let's first uh, talk about the role of high-dose therapy and stem cell transplant using autologous stem cell. This has almost become one of the standard of care. If you look at the International Bone Marrow Transplant Registry from Milwaukee and you look at the U.S. data, and also globally in European data too, the most common indication for autologous stem cell transplant in this country is multiple myeloma. That shows you that it has been universally adopted. Then the next question is that who benefit from it and when should be high dose therapy and stem cell transplant applied in the course of the illness of myeloma patient. In general, I tend to prefer using high dose therapy and stem cell transplant as part of the initial therapy so that the patient goes into complete remission and the transplant also improves the remission duration or progression-free survival. So I like to incorporate upfront. But there is a large randomized clinical trial being conducted both in France as well as in the United States called Dana Farber Cancer Institute slash IFM clinical trial, which is rolled out across the country. And you know, Mount Sinai Medical Center is part of this uh, clinical trial. Here we are asking that the patient will be treated with triple regimen induction. One half will go through transplant right away. The other half will go through stem cell harvest, but not transplant, but will get the triple therapy for the three months you know, to compensate for the patient going for transplant, and both patients will be on maintenance therapy. This is an ongoing trial, important trial. It will address whether we should consistently do high-dose therapy and stem cell transplant upfront in all patients. But barring the results coming from that, I would still recommend that high-dose therapy and stem cell transplant is better utilized uh, upfront. The next question is, who benefit most from it? First of all, I do benefit most of the patient, even high-risk patient benefit, but the results when we look at it um, from the HOAN trial and other trials, it is clear the patient with good risk definitely benefit from high-dose therapy and stem cell transplantation. Good risks are patient with hyperdiploidy, patient with 1114 translocation, those who do not have the high-risk genetic constellation. So those are the patients really do benefit and they have a survival benefit when they go through high-dose therapy and stem cell transplant. So in general, I do recommend high-dose therapy and stem cell transplant, autologous stem cell transplant up front. Now, what about allogenic bone marrow transplantation? So far, I would still consider allogenic bone marrow transplantation should be done in a clinical trial situation. And uh, generally, I do not incorporate it upfront, even in high-risk patient, because the clinical trials uh, done BMT, CTN, has not shown a significant advantage in survival for patient who even with high-risk genetics who went through upfront allogenic transplantation. So I still feel it's a clinical trial. Patients, young patients with sibling match, this option should be discussed with them. They could go on and participate in clinical trial upfront if they have high-risk genetics and a physician is concerned about it. But if the patient has relapsed myeloma and they have high-risk constellation, I, then I do think allogenic transplantation should be uh, broached with these patients. But in general, it is better done under clinical trial situation because there is no clear-cut answer that the allogenic transplantation is superior, even though we do know a subset of patients are perhaps cured by going through allogenic transplantation.